Hey party people, welcome to the first episode of Back to the Future, the game. This is a game that was recently purchased for me by uh, Brother Sean of the California Kings, and so we are going to be going through this game and we're going to be playing it. I, um, oh man, I get such a wave of nostalgia for Back to the Future. Honestly, this is one of the few movies where I can say, the you know, the first, the first film, from start to finish, an absolute classic, perfect. Uh, begin, before we begin, would you like to see notifications when Marty has a new goal? I'm going to go with yes, because um, I, I don't mind a little bit of hand-holding. A little bit. Are you starting? Okay, good. <clears throat> Alright, I turned the. this is a bit of an older game. I turned the graphics all the way up. I really want to see how this performs. Oh, okay, let's just... Oh my god, that music. Alright, I'm ready. Oh, Good evening. Man. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 AM. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's that is it. Christopher Lloyd, by oh, the way, oh, doing that oh, voice. Oh, oh, okay. Amazing. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God damn. Not me. The car. The car. Oh, this is nostalgia. So fucking good, man. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. God, whoever did, did Marty's voice anything. got it pitch the perfect. The structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. I gotta pick the dialogue, seconds, I gotta pick the dialogue. We shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? <laughs> God, they well, got I it perfect. If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Is this? Uh, Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, wh what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Okay. Walk Marty to the left just so you can see. No, 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 go away, go away, go away. Okay, so it's good. This is gonna give me the. Oh, okay. Oh, this is neat. Okay. Okay, so fair, fair disclosure. I have played this game once upon a time before. Click your left mouse button to select it. I played it on uh, on the PS3. Notebook. Notebook. Um. Got so it. I played through episode one, and I think a little bit of episode Flux two. Capacitor. That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention! The thing that makes time travel possible! 
In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic! Let's see. It's mass equals i times z, and e equals the square root of z times c squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inverted. Uh, something's way off here. So, yeah, even though I've played this game before, I literally remember very few things about it. So, like, this uh, opening... Doc? I, I, I really don't remember what's going on. Oh. Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Oh, okay, it was a dream. Woo! Marty, is everything okay? Oh my god, they got a weird science poster in the back. That yeah, is awesome. Yeah, Mom, I, it, was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound oh, now. Back in good old 1986. 1986. One year but later. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap. I'm late. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, man. You know, for uh, for those of you who aren't really aware, this is essentially Back to the Future 4. They got Bob Gale, writer, uh, the co-writer of the original Back to the Future trilogy, to work on this, along with Telltale Games. So, um, in my opinion, this is this is the best way to do a sequel to anything that has had a long stretch of time. Like they did, they were they never had any intention of doing a film version of Back to the Future 4. But Telltale Games went and got the license, and they went. They did it right. They got Bob Gale on. They got um, they got Christopher Lloyd on to do the voice of Doc Brown. Um, I don't know who does the voice of Marty, um, but again, he's pitch perfect. So what we're seeing here is a very faithful um, adaptation and continuation of what was brought before in Back to the Future. So like this is this is very respectful. It's all new, and it's different. As you could say, as, as they said already, it's 1986. Story consultant, Bob Gale, you see? Oh, God. Oh, man, this makes me happy. I'm so excited for this. So very excited to play through this Dad, whole Dad, are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset. But your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? <laughs> it's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, yeah. there. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... ...remembering. Okay, so, the control scheme is you can click on things. Can I? I better stick around. Doc might have left something important behind, and he wouldn't want it to end up at Biff's place. Oh, this is, let's see, hints, story so far. Okay, I like that, dog feeder. Let's click on things. Hey, let me. Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. Hmm. Let's see, dog feeder, Cl clocks, fish tank. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. 
right click? Okay, right clicking does nothing. Clocks. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. Probably because he went back to the past, Marty. You and I want George. Television. Clocks. Let's check out the TV. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? <laughs> There's a nice little Easter egg for you. Come on, if you haven't seen Back to the Future, stop watching this, go watch it, and then come back. He's dead. Let's see. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, Mr. Hintz, you're coming on strong there. I might have to, uh, hang on a second. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Okay, let's uh, real quick into the settings here. Hint level none. Let's not do pop-up text. Oh. Oh, yes, I do want that, I think. Yes, goals pop-up. Let's turn the, let's just turn the goals off. Let's do that. Why are you there? It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Nope, nope. Over here. There we go. He's dead. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. What's Biff doing here? He wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. <laughs> About Biff, Dad... <laughs> I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just... <laughs> weird... stuff... <laughs> about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but... I feel like it was telling me something. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. All right! Don't go look at his model of freaking Hill Valley. Go away. I just want to, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to go back into the hint level down. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure it'll, uh, the hints will go away here on their own soon enough. Possibly after I look at the model of Hill Valley. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, oh. that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what, a not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, huh. But really, can I? No, nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Huh. Great. 
Okay, I will click on the hints button. Maybe. Mind reading. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Let's see here. Wait, I got one! Seems kind of empty without the courthouse. Let's see, scientific equipment. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. What's in the vat? That must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. Oh, that smells like beef stew. Alright. Hey, don't cut off my music! Drinking, Biff. Hey, Biff. I'll pay you for it. How much? Um, Not enough. Hmm. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. Yeah, then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. Wow. Biff really is an asshole. Let's that see That notebook here. wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? Yes. Uh, never mind. Let's see. All right, let's find what we can find. Oh, what did we just land on here? Square model. Oh. Marty's guitar. Oh, I want Marty's guitar. Hey, Dad. Wh why does my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Oh, nice, nice. Photo of George McFly. Nice, 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 nice. Let's try I keep this picture of my dad to remind me that even the most hopeless losers can grow up to be pretty cool guys. Yeah, okay. It may not look like much, but it packs a wallop. Can we... Okay. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. Well, it's one for the monkey, two for the snow, three to get ready now. Go, Scott, go. Kind of getting a feeling here. Amplifier control. Let's make some noise. Yes! Here we go, we got this. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. This is gonna be good, kids! Now watch me blow the lid off this joint! Oh. Whatever you say. <laughs> Rock on, bitch. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Happy birthday. Ah, Doc. Where are you? He's in the past, you know that, Marty. Man, they even got... They, they've they really faithfully recreated this. This is fantastic looking. Did the whole ice thing. You'll notice that the whole, like, ice effect of the uh, time machine coming out of the... Uh, Space-time continuum. They didn't really carry that on past the first one. Doc? 
Who's in the DeLorean, kid? Come on. Come on, show me. Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? I'm a little curious, though. Okay, real quick, I am a little curious because if this, as according to the uh, the picture that we saw on Marty's uh, bed, his nightstand, if this is taking place after Back to the Future 3, how come the DeLorean is here? Because the DeLorean was, in fact, destroyed. And why isn't Marty... I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Why isn't he questioning that? I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Right, Marty, thank you. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. Hmm. Okay. Marty? Ah! Marty, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now. Or then. Or now. Uh, <laughs> maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Now, aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, last time departed. Good luck. Right, right, last time departed, last time departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? What is this? I probably nope, shouldn't the... fiddle with the time circuits again until I know when to look for Doc. I meant to click on the shoe, my apologies. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. What do we got, though, Marty? Um, let's check our inventory. This time-traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. Marty? Ah! Marty? Ah! <laughs> I'll take it. This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. And okay. by wrong hands, I mostly mean Biff. Okay, so exit. Einstein. Einstein. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? What do you know about this shoe, Aini? Good question. Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Sweet! Where are we going, Einstein? This, this game's really got the whole, like, 1985 okay, now feel we're getting down to somewhere. it. Where are we going? How's this supposed to lead me to dock, Aini? Okay, well, um, considering the time, I'm going to call this episode right here for now. As you can see, this is a fantastic, faithful recreation of uh, uh, the Back to the Future series, uh, specifically Back to the Future 1. And while um, I'm noticing a few continuity gaps here, I'm, I'm having a great time so far. This is f fucking absurdly great. This is... Oh my god, this is this is just great. This is great. I can already tell I'm going to have a fun time. Like I said, um, I have already played through episode 1 already. I really don't remember anything about it. Um, and I played, I think, through a little bit of episode 2. Um, but I came nowhere near close to completing the game. So come join me as we play through this game. This is Chris with the California Kings. Check out everything else that we got going on on the channel. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.